Okay, so the challenging. Here are the three challenging energies to kind of just be mindful of for the next six months. And you know, we'll probably move in and out of them in our own ways as needed. Number one, the base release of anger or fire. So for you, it might not be anger, but it might be that you feel like you're on fire and that your emotions are very electrified and it might come in sudden bursts and you might be very surprised. So the question I have for you around that one is, is it a release of anger or fire or is it fuel for your next creation? Because it can be either. Sometimes we're burning off or allowing out emotions that we've suppressed, that our life circumstances have not allowed us to feel. So for example, you know, I think of all the people who during the Me Too movement, when that was coming to light and getting a really big worldwide focus, I think of the emotions and the fire and the anger and the grief and the sadness that a lot of people said that wave of healing allowed them to feel. Like in a way they'd never really been able to feel it, in a way they'd never really been able to surface it through their bodies. So emotional healing is the second theme around our three challenging, more challenging areas in the next six months. And that links to that, you know, a lot of that's emotional healing, trapped energy, suppressed energy, stuffed down energy that is allowed to come out. And anger is a very fast flush of energy. So for some of you, the base release of anger and fire will come as you become more yourself, become more expressed, find your voice, choose to say something to somebody that you haven't said before. A week later, you might think, God, why am I so angry? And it will just come very randomly. It won't be aimed at that person who just cut you off at the red light. And it won't be aimed at your dad who just said that thing that always triggers you. It will just move through. But equally, it can be fuel for your creation. So again, the heading for this whole thing is creation and innovation. So we often get these fire up feelings and movements through our body as we're calibrating for our future. And when I say calibrating, rearranging inside who we're about to become before we get there. Think of it as um, stage fright. So if you've ever had to give a talk at a wedding or a funeral, or perhaps like me, you've done that for a living. Uh, karaoke is a good example. You know how with karaoke, people are usually like, oh God, no, I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And then the minute they do it, they don't want to get down. It's like, no, no, put Donna Summer back on. I want to do another one, you know, whatever it is. And we get that kind of precursor where the energy starts to kind of go like this before it comes out. And so that fire energy for many of you is going to be because you are rebirthing who you are so that you can create something different in the outer world. So don't be too alarmed by the base release of anger and fire. But equally, try not to aim it at someone if you feel it, because in most cases, it won't be anyone else that's triggering you. It will just be an alchemical change in you. And it's okay. I think we're all taught that anger isn't good or is unhealthy. I know Many of my friends who are women have also, you know, I've seen that programming that women have had hoisted on them way more than men of our generation, uh, where, you know, you're supposed to be nice, you're supposed to smile, oh, she's angry, and then she gets called all kinds of names that an angry man doesn't get called. So if you're a woman and you're feeling that too, it's all okay. Number two is emotional healing. Again, this to me is a bit more obvious. I mean, we've been seeing this for the last year or two. Worldwide and personal, from shadow into light. So things that we have, again, not talked about. I look at everything that's been going on recently around racial trauma and racial healing on the planet. I mean, pick your area. There are so many different areas that we can see the wounds are more surfaced and are being spoken about and are being navigated. And sure, the progress is slower than most of us would like, but this is a time of emotional healing. And so that's gonna be very much surfacing. You yourself may or may not be going through a lot of emotional healing in the next six months, because you may have reached a point where that isn't really your focus. Maybe you've done a lot already, but you'll feel it and see it around you. It is worldwide and it is also personal. 
So you'll be aware of that moving through the next six months. And then number three, a little bit like science and progress, where I said that in the next six months, we're going to see some of this, but it's really a three to five year arc that that energy is going to play out over. This one I've spoken about in the last couple of months, and um, this one is here to stay for a, a good good year or two as well. It's lies, illusions, and deception. Lies, illusions, and deception. And the surfacing of something that is a lie, or an illusion, or a deception, that perhaps previously didn't seem that way to you, or perhaps previously actually felt like a truth or a normality. So um, be mindful if you're, if you're, (laughs) I get it, but if you're sitting there going, oh good, finally, yes, finally, I've been waiting for that. It won't just be like sitting back and watching it play out for you. There will be emotional healing. Even if you're somebody who's felt like we've been overdue that for a long time, there'll be some emotional movement for you too. And it will happen slowly and it will happen as much as we as a collective can handle it. You're already seeing it. I mean, there are, there are things coming out left, right, and center. Not everybody agrees with them, sees them, finds them, learns about them. But we're, again, in this unearthing of the shadow on Earth. So it may also be for you that you're having to learn to be compassionate with yourself a, around the way that you bought into a lie or an illusion or a deception. Or we look at ourselves and go, oh, wow, I... I didn't do very well, you know, however many years ago. I kind of told a lie about myself there, and I know why I did it, but I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to let go of that. And again, it's not personal, it's collective. This is in the wiring. Anything I'm talking about, we're all trained into being this way. We're all trained by each other, by societal rules. And what we're seeing now with the lies, illusions, and deception is we can't go forward with those things being as rigidly held or as wholeheartedly supported as they have been. Because for a lot of the higher consciousness innovation, those two things just can't coexist. So as the higher consciousness comes in, the lies, illusions, and deception, the I'll call it the old and the black and whites that are, de- are designed to hold very um, non-holistic systems in place, systems that don't care for the whole, but perhaps uh, care for certain individuals or certain groups and eliminate the rest or try to. That's the kind of stuff that we're going to see breaking down. So that's uncomfortable. Even if you're celebrating it or you're glad thing, it's still emotional because for a lot of people who haven't even considered that that stuff was a lie, it's traumatic. So the way to kind of navigate that energy if you find yourself in it, or you find yourself confused by what's a lie, what's an illusion, what isn't, I don't know. What is your truth? And leaving that which no longer works. So for you, it might mean taking a temporary break from your favorite, I don't know, news channel, one of your friends, uh, a group that you used to hang out with, and it doesn't mean you have to walk away, but you might find that your truth isn't welcome there. And this is a time where your own personal truth about things is really important. And, you know, there's another way to look at this, I think, which is, I think one of the great gifts of uh, channeling for me was it made me realize everything's a rabbit hole. Uh, The more questions you ask the other side, the more questions you realize there are to ask. And the great humbling aspect of that, I, I felt, was you realize you don't know anything because there's so much to know. It's so vast. And in our lifetimes, very few of us are designed to be that cosmically available to everything going on on the planet and everybody's life and everybody's thoughts. So you do have to choose your path. And especially with all the group think and group manipulation that's going on out there in the world, this is a really good time if you're exhausted by it, depressed by it, to go, you know what, I'm going to decide what feels true to me and I'm going to follow that and I'm going to stay with that until something else shifts my perspective. But I'm not going to stress about all the noise that's going on out there. So, because that lies, illusions and deceptions piece, it's chaotic. It can have a lot of darkness in it 
and it won't help you find your purpose. It might be necessary to flirt with it or investigate it to a certain degree for a certain amount of time, but if you stay focused on it, you will end up as confused and chaotic emotionally as it itself. So I hope that helps. How are we doing for time? Okay, good. So if you have your pen and paper, or if you um, are able to type this on a screen, I have three questions for you. And I, questions to awaken your soul energy, because we're all very good at being human. I mean, we're doing that every single day. That's, that's wired into how we live. But really for me, the, the place of consciousness that most of us enjoy residing in more is when we feel like our soul and our human are both allowed to be part of our day and part of our world. It's a marriage. So a few questions to awaken your soul energy. So here is the first one, and this is something you can ask yourself every day. How am I doing today? Question mark. So this is not how your partner's doing, not how your kids are doing, not how your pets are doing, and not how your favorite plant is doing, or your favorite music star or whatever. How am I doing today? It's a really good question to ask yourself because you're sometimes surprised by the answer. So just jot down a few words or sentences about how am I doing today? And if you're stuck with this question, it can just be words. So for example, I just did it myself and I got peaceful, energized, curious. Those are three states I'm in right now. And those states, I'm sure, will be different in 30 to 60 minutes from now. But how am I doing today in this moment? What I got was peaceful, energized, curious. So see what you can get. Take a moment. So... The reason to do this as a daily practice, if you like, or at least a few times a week, is it lets you observe yourself and become more aware of yourself, become more in tune with yourself. The risk and the gift of doing this exercise and writing down a sentence or a few words or whatever it is, is to notice your reaction patterns, your mind or your nervous system. So for example, I'll take my three words as an example. Now, if I have a tendency to worry about things and my words were energized, peaceful, curious, that's me taking that moment to become aware of how I'm doing. Cool. But then what happens? Oh, my mind goes, oh, well, hang on. Should I, should I be peaceful? Because I've, I've actually got a lot to do and uh, ooh, I'm doing a broadcast right now. I don't know if energized is fine, but I don't know if I should be peaceful. Surely I should be a bit more... You see what I mean? So, the, so this is also a great exercise to lovingly observe your reactions and get, get clearer about them. You took a space where your mind wasn't in charge. You made a genuine inquiry about how you're feeling, how you're doing. That had nothing to do with the story that you were just in, uh, in the store or with your friend. Just in that moment, how am I right now in this moment? What words come to me? What feelings do I feel that I can translate into words? You get to observe and become aware of yourself and then you get to observe and become aware of your reaction patterns in your mind or your nervous system. This is very good information because if you start to go, oh my God, I freak out about everything I think about myself. Okay, I should do some work around mindfulness and meditation. Maybe I need to do some deep healing around it. Where did it come from? But it's going to get in my way. If I don't give that some space, it's going to get in my way with how I want to live my life and what I want to create. So how am I doing today? That's an observation and an awareness exercise. Question two, where do I want to be in life in 12 months time? Now I get it, you're like, oh Lee, that's a very big question. I know, but you can ask this every day. And again, it's a game, we're playing. We're just opening our awareness to see what our soul wants to tell us today. So where do I want to be in life in 12 months time? I'll go first. So I would say, uh, I would say, 
balanced, purposeful, and more heart open. That's what comes to me right now. In an hour, something else might come to me. But again, where do I want to be in life in 12 months time? Balanced, because balance is really important and it's easy to be off balance. Uh, purposeful, I mean, I already feel purposeful, but I, that's very important to me. I, I, I am aware of that part of my wiring and my mission here. And then more heart open, I'm probably more heart open than I've ever been, but it'd be great to be more. So these are loose, goals if you like and again it's not anything I then have to hold myself to or force myself to but if I don't inquire if I don't sit and have that moment I'm never going to help create it so take a moment to answer the question for yourself where do I want to be in life in 12 months time Okay, and you can always write more later. Um, for those of you, I got the feeling some of you might have burst into tears at that and not uh, felt bad because you couldn't get anything and you feel kind of hopeless. Um, the more you do this exercise, the more that emotion will move and the more you'll start to get things. This is not about getting it right. Again, remember, we're just lovingly observing where we're at. It's okay if one day you're blank or one day you're sad that you can't think of something or you notice you don't believe that you could improve things in 12 months time and it makes you start crying. That's actually something to celebrate because you're noticing it. And even having that awareness, it will start to start to move it. So you could practice this regularly to get to that place of, I'm allowed to want something. Doesn't mean it's necessarily going to happen or I'm gonna force it to happen, but I'm allowed to want. I'm allowed to want a next step or a next thing for my life. So stasis is not possible. We don't stay still. We erode or we grow. You know, if you're, let's say you've been depressed for two years and you're like, well, I, I feel like I've just been stuck for two years. You haven't been stuck for two years. You may not have made any progress that you would like to see happen, but we don't stay stuck. Who you are depressed today will be very different to who you were depressed two years ago, partly because of the world, partly because as we age, we change, and partly because you've now had two years of depression, which is very different to when it started when you were at month zero of depression. So stasis is not possible. But erosion is, and the way for us to not erode is to do the little that we can on any given day, especially if it feels hard. This is the third and final question, and it relates to where do I want to be in life in 12 months time? The question is, what can I create or change now to support that? What can I create or change now to support that? So I'll go first. Balance. Well, I actually, balance has been a huge focus of mine for the last six weeks, and I've made some real headway in, in learning to balance my life, my work, uh, my ability to rest more. So that's, I'm kind of making some headway, and I can think of a few things I could jot down that would continue that. Um, what else did I say? Uh, more heart open. Again, I can see things I'm doing in my life right now that are helping me with that. So again, I could jot down a few things that I'm recognizing are helping. Um, so what can I create or change now to support that? What one thing could you do today that might be teeny tiny or this week or this month that could help support you with where you want to be in life in 12 months time? And I'll give you a really good, simple example. You could write it on a big piece of paper and stick it on your wall where you want to be in 12 months' time. That action is supportive of you manifesting it because you're going to see it regularly. You're going to bring it to life by putting it in your mind, in your focus every day and putting it somewhere in your room. So what could you change or create now to support the desire of where you want to be 
or what you want to become in 12 months time. Welcome to Transmissions 2021. We are bringing Transmissions back this summer because last year when we first presented it, it was not only our most popular offering ever, we had several thousand of you join us from around the world. It was a way that I and my team could bring some of the energy of Soul Magic, our annual retreat, to you in the comfort of your own home, more affordably and with no limit on how many people we could serve. So Transmissions is a metaphysical, intuitive and self-growth deep dive to allow you to cultivate more energy for your life and for you to bring to the world. The themes for this year are going to be joy, healing, expression, freedom and magic. The way that these topics are explored is through five live broadcasts where I will not only teach intuitively, but I will channel my guides the Z's. We provide transcripts, audio downloads of each session. There is an energy blueprint that you will receive ahead of the course starting where I write a document basically that I channel about what energies we're going to be cultivating, looking at, moving, releasing. We also have several supplemental materials and videos from members of my team. So there are meditations, there are videos that help you support yourself as you go through a journey like this. We also have the private members forum, which is away from social media, so you can privately share and discuss with all other members of the course. The final element of our transmissions courses is the music album that Devor Bozik and I create. This is both spoken word and music, and it's five 10 minute tracks. You may have seen that we've just publicly released last year's album, which we created for course members. So you can stream that right now on Spotify or wherever you get your music. But for this year, we will exclusively be bringing you Transmissions Volume 2, which will be available this year only to course members. So we invite you to check out the course page, read more details, and if it resonates for you to join us for Transmissions 2021, we would love to welcome you aboard.